Hi everyone, my name is Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading and this is the start of the amazing readathon. We just got the first Root Info card and it starts tomorrow night, but I picked my book and I figured I'd start the vlog and let you know what I'll be starting reading on kickoff sprints tomorrow night. The Amazing Readathon, if you don't know, is a readathon based off The Amazing Race hosted by Four Paws and a Books. I will link Brie and everybody else down in the description box below. So go check out everybody's channels. There's gonna be tons of sprints. And when you see this, there still will be half the month left because I'm doing a part one, part two vlog and vlogging all 10 prompts. I am a co-host for Team Blue, which is why I am wearing blue today and why I do plan, if I can, to fill every prompt with a blue book. We are headed to New York, starting off first with needing a book by one of the five publishers. I have looked at my TBR and luckily one of the books that I have for Timmy's TBR was published by HarperCollins. So that is the one that I will be going with. And that book is Once Upon a Wardrobe by Patty Callahan. This is a historical fiction based around the life and the books of C.S. Lewis and the Narnia books, specifically The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I loved The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe growing up, especially book two. I do realize that there is some things in the series that are problematic, especially in the other books, but I do still kind of have a soft spot for the books and a nostalgia factor. And this is an historical fiction that I picked up a couple months ago. I don't exactly remember when around, like I said, the second book in the Narnia series. This follows Meg. Meg's brother is much younger than her. Meg is a scientist and is studying, I think at Cambridge or Oxford, at Oxford. And her brother is much younger and is obsessed with Narnia. He wants to know more about Narnia and where Narnia came from and what was the inspiration of Narnia. And he wants to know everything about Narnia. Since Meg is at Oxford and is in the world of science and academia in London, she has a way of getting in contact with C.S. Lewis and ends up sitting down with him to kind of get the behind the scenes inspiration to Narnia and the books. It's under 300 pages, luckily, so since I'm not in a historical fiction mood, I can at least get this done quickly. I'm still hoping to enjoy my time with it, but just right now, I'm just not in a historical fiction mood, but I have to read this anyway, so let's get it done. I will start it tomorrow night on the kickoff sprints, and I will update you when those sprints are done with how far I got through the book and maybe a little bit more information about it, but let's jump in. Hi everyone, it is officially August 1st. Last night was kickoff sprints, so we could actually get started on our books about four hours before midnight for me. And I started Once Upon a Wardrobe. I ended up reading almost all of this book last night on sprints. I had about a hundred pages left when I went to bed and I quickly knocked that out this morning. So I am already done my first book. I've already gone to New York. I've driven there, I'm there, I'm good to go. For this book, I'm of two minds because I did enjoy the Meg and George part of this book. Meg has a little brother named George and George loves Narnia and we also find out that George has a terminal heart condition and we honestly don't know how much longer George is going to be with this family. We know it's coming, his time's coming to an end and he loves Narnia. Meg reaches out to C.S. Lewis because again she has the connection through being at Oxford University and C.S. Lewis and his brother sit down with Meg at their home and start telling her stories basically stories of their life that kind of influenced Narnia and the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe books. I enjoyed that part of the book immensely. I really felt like the Meg timeline with George and even the interview with C.S. Lewis at the beginning of this book really had the same magical feel of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and really made me feel nostalgic for the original book. However, after the first interview with C.S. Lewis, all the other interviews that Meg does are not shown on book. We just get basically stories of C.S. Lewis's life and it becomes very nonfiction feeling.
and I do know this is historical fiction, but it's not told like a story. It's almost told like a biography. And I did not enjoy that part of the book because it felt removed from that atmosphere that I was enjoying from the other half of the book. So we would kind of go in and out of each timeline. It's basically a timeline. I realized it was the stories Meg was getting, but it was C.S. Lewis's past and it was told very biography styled. So I kind of thought of them as two different timelines, past and current. I really loved the Meg and George part and the C.S. Lewis part when he was part of their world was interesting, but when it was just like a biography, I was not that interested in that. And I just felt, like I said, it felt disconnected. It didn't have the same nostalgia feel for Narnia as the rest of the book did. And I really felt like the first interview where it was told like an interview, Meg sitting in his home and really we, we were getting the atmosphere of his cottage and everything like that. If that would have continued and we would have got the stories that way, I think that would have been better for me. I think it would have made more sense and felt less disjointed for me. Like I said, I really liked the Meg storyline and George. At the end, I teared up a little bit. And I really enjoyed seeing George's love for stories and his love for fantasy and his love for fairy tales and him imprinting that love onto Meg and that feeling of whimsy onto Meg. I really liked that part of the book. So like I said, I'm of two minds. I'm of two minds with this book because there were parts of it that were fantastic for me and then there were parts that I didn't enjoy as much. So I think I am going to give this a three star because really about 50% of the book I wasn't that interested in, but the part that I was interested in was really, really good. Like I said, I have made it to New York on the very first day. I have no idea when the next prompt comes out, but I'm suspecting in a couple of days. I doubt we're gonna get them more often than that. Who knows? I will come back once I, once I know what the next prompt is. But as of for right now, I still have time to read. So I am going to be doing some sightseeing in New York. Basically for the Amazing Readathon, if you complete your prompt and get there, you can keep completing the prompt in the city and getting points for your team. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be working on another book that fits the prompt. That book is going to be Curious Tides by Pascal LaSalle. This is a ARC. This does not come out. It comes out on October 3rd, 2023. Simon & Schuster's was very kind to send me the arc of this book. It's a Dark Academia book. I'm very excited. Dark Academia fantasy. I'm very excited to read this. But it also works for the prompt because Simon & Schuster's is one of the big five. It's chunky. Should I be taking on such a chunky book for sightseeing? <sighs> Who knows, but I need to read it for another video. So it works for the prompt. So here we go. But you will see me next when we have the next amazing readathon, city, route, whatever Brie has in store for us. So until then, I'm going to go do some sightseeing and finish up another vlog. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. Brie dropped a prompt at midnight last night for the next city. I was sound asleep, sleeping my little heart away. So when I woke up this morning, I saw that this happened and that we are going to Mexico City. So we are off, we're off to Mexico City, everyone. And the prompt for this is to read a book with a beautiful cover. So I looked at my Timmy's TBR stack because I have a lot of options because Timmy's TBR gave me a lot of books. And I've decided to read The Marriage Game by Sarah Denzi. So that is the book that I will be reading for this prompt. It is a gorgeous cover and I've been excited to read this. Let's jump in and read this for Mexico City. So I have made it to 50% of The Marriage Game by Sarah Denzi. It is the next day. I read a little under half of this yesterday on Aoife Sprints and then finished the rest in the evening. But I'm going to finish the book today. That's my plan because I have no idea when the next city is coming out. So I need to finish this today. So this follows Layla. Layla has broken up with her boyfriend in New York. She caught him cheating on her and she has flown home. She is over dating these kind of guys. She is over it. 
Her father owns a Michelin star Indian restaurant and this follows an Indian American family. And I just love the culture and the talk of food in this book will make you hungry. It is so fun to see their family and the culture through this book. It just gives it such a wonderful atmosphere. And I'm just loving that aspect of this book because both of our main characters are Indian and it really lends to the culture in this book. And we see both their families and the family dynamics. And I'm really enjoying that part of the book. So Layla comes home. She announces that she is back. Her dad says, you know, you can go upstairs and have the office upstairs, but there's a slight problem. That office has already been rented out, but the new tenant hasn't moved in. I will call him and say it's no longer available. Her dad, when he found out she was broken up with her boyfriend, set up this online profile without Layla knowing on a website to basically find not an arranged marriage, but an arranged match. So an arranged match from what I'm getting from the book and also from what I kind of know already is when the parents find a suitable gentleman for uh, for their daughter and basically introduce them and then the the two people figure out if they are a good match from there. So it's not like you have to get married. It's just a, it's an arranged introduction based on what your parents think will work best for you. And that is what this book is because her father ends up in the first chapter in the hospital. So he has set up all these things before Layla even arrives home and then is in the hospital and doesn't have a chance to cancel any of them. He also doesn't have a chance to tell the new tenant that he can't have the office space. So when Sam, who is the new tenant, arrives at his office and Layla is all set up in there for her new business, there is some conflict and there is some rivalry there of who's gonna get the office and they definitely get on each other's nerves, but there's definitely some sexual tension. And in that way, they ended up sharing an office to kind of get one of them to leave. And it really felt kind of like the hating game in a lot of ways at the beginning of this book, just because it was very much like an office enemies to lovers situation that was going on with Sam. Sam finds out her dad is in the hospital, finds out that she is going to be meeting all these guys because she finds out about her dad putting her on this website. And Layla is tired of the dating scene and is like, maybe I need to try this. It has worked for people for centuries, arranged marriages, and arranged introductions. This has worked for centuries. Her parents were in arranged marriage. So she's like, maybe I should just try that. Maybe my dad is right. Maybe I should just try that. And she's like, I'm going to meet these guys. I'm going to meet them. And I'm going to continue doing these dates while my dad is in the hospital. Sam thinks that this could be dangerous because he has no idea who these men are. He has a past trauma of a person in his family being abused in a domestic violence situation. So he's very wary of that. So he basically says, fine, if you're going to meet all these guys, I'm going to come with you. I'm going to come with you and meet them with you just to make sure that it's a safe situation. And Lila is not keen on that because she's like, I lived in New York by myself. I'm an independent woman. I don't need you to look after me. But they make a deal that if he helps with this, they'll work out something with the office and it's it's kind of like an arrangement in that way. Obviously, at this point, they have been enemies, kind of irritated with each other, trying to share this office space, but there is sexual tension and, you know, it's it's a romance book. So you can't put two people in close proximity, stuck in an office, and not assume something's going to happen with Sam and Layla. But that that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> that's where we're going, I'm pretty sure. But it is fun watching them go on these kind of blind dates or introduction meetings to these gentlemen. They are really funny. Some of them are very hysterical. What the men are looking for or who they are. This book has a lot of moments where I'm just laughing out loud and 
It's very, very funny. The delivery that Sarah, the author, uses in this book. As you can tell, I'm really enjoying this book and I'm excited to get back into it today. I only have about 50% left. It's not going to take me very long. It is contemporary romance. It reads quickly. And then if we haven't heard anything from Brie, because who knows, I might have to do some sightseeing or I don't know. I don't know what the day is going to hold really, but I need to get to Mexico City first. So here we go. You're catching me making dinner, but I want to move on to my sightseeing book and I just want to vlog my thoughts while they're fresh because a few minutes ago I finished the marriage game while I was cooking dinner. So right now I'm sitting here. I'm just about to start some pasta to go with the chicken for tonight's dinner. So you're getting a vlog update while I stir at the stove because mom life. So that's what I'm doing. Today I was on Margaret Sprint's reading the marriage game for I think about three hours. I had to hop off early because I had some real life adulting to do. And while I was doing that, I finished the marriage game, like I said, just a few minutes ago on audio. I'm gonna give this four stars. I had a really great time with this book. Like I said, everything I said in that first clip, I still stand by. I'm kind of surprised that it ended up getting a four star considering how the book went in the second half. It normally would be something I wouldn't like just because the third act breakup in this book is like this man screwed up royally. Like he had a moment. And I mean, the third act breakup makes sense because the man messed up. Like he made some choices. Sam made some choices that were horrible choices. And I can understand why Layla was like, I'm out, this isn't gonna work. Because so would any woman. And to be honest, sometimes I, I would prefer that over miscommunication. But in this case, it really made me, normally I'd be like, mm, that's a pretty big red flag. But at the end of the day, it was, I think, something they worked around quite well which is why I didn't mind. It, it was worked out in the end in an okay fashion. Sam really did a lot of growing after the third act breakup. That made me feel like it was okay. I, I mean, I enjoyed the book, so I'm not gonna, I had a good time with it. Even though the man really, I mean, the third act breakup made sense. At least it wasn't a miscommunication breakup. But everything I said at the beginning of this book, I stand by. And really, that's all that happened in the second half. They were together for a very small period of time, as happens in romance. The smutty scenes were, they weren't super spicy, but it wasn't closed door. But it's not really a spicy book or not super, super spicy. But it was still good. And, you know, as, as happens, they get together. There's a third act breakup and, you know. The end of the book happens. Every romance book that has ever existed is that way. Anyway, four stars and I'm really glad that I picked this up. I definitely will be continuing the series. At, right now it's a three book series. I don't know if it's done. It has not had a new book come out since 2021 so it very well could be done but I am going to be picking up the second book hopefully sometime soon, probably not this month. And now I am in Mexico City. Do I know where we're going next? Absolutely not. So I'm going to do some sightseeing. I think I'm gonna be finishing up Paris Delacorte is about to crumble for my sightseeing book or at least start there. I do have a physical copy, but not up here. So I'll just insert a picture. I am halfway through that book already, not quite, like 47% of the way through. And I'm going to finish that book off for Mexico. I'm gonna do that. And if I get any more sightseeing in, I'll do that as well. But that is it for this update. I will update you once Brie drops some more chaos and lets us know what the next prompt is. Good morning, friends. It is August 7th, and I woke up this morning to a new amazing readathon prompt and a way to get to a new city. We are traveling to Brazil, and I'm very excited. I knew this prompt was going to be a little bit difficult, but luckily, Brie had kind of mentioned on the kickoff sprints that it would be a good time for Margaret to do 
a mini Little Thieves read-along during Prompt 3. Little Thieves is on my TBR, so I kind of already knew that whenever Prompt 3 dropped, I'd be doing Little Thieves. The prompt was for three people on the cover. There are three people on the Little Thieves cover, so that is what I'm going to be doing to get to Brazil. This is a chunky book. It's 500 pages. I think it's 512, something like that. It's over 500 pages. So I don't know how much sightseeing I'm going to be doing, but there is so many sprints going on with Amazing Readathon that I may get another book in as well for sightseeing. We'll see how it goes. Honestly, this was on my TBR for Timmy's TBR, and I couldn't even really give a synopsis when I did my Timmy's TBR for this book because where it's fantasy, it's probably just hard to quite follow the synopsis that the book gives for me to like regurgitate it back to you. So I'm going to read a little bit and then I will come chat with you a little bit more once I have a better idea of what's actually happening in this book. So I'll, I'll check in with you at about the 50% point. I'm on Aoife Sprints at one o'clock today, so I should be able to get a good chunk of this read during that time, or at least a good chunk of that first 50% during that. I think Margaret has sprints tonight. So we've, we've got some sprints going on and we're gonna go read some Little Thieves. This is Margaret's host favorite. It's Margaret's favorite, one of Margaret's favorite books. I've been hearing Margaret go on about this book since they reread it and read the sequel. It has made me want to pick it up so badly, so I finally get to. Hi everyone, so I am on Aoife Sprints, as you can see in the background, and I have officially made it to 54% of Little Thieves. This is reading so quickly. I mean, I only talked to you this morning. It's getting close to supper time here. It's not even supper time yet. And I've already read half of this pretty chunky fantasy book. It reads so quickly. It's so digestible of a story. So basically in this book, we follow Vanya. Vanya is our main character. And Vanya is definitely, especially at the start of this book, a morally gray character. Vanya has made some choices in their life that have put them in somewhat of a trouble situation now in the present. So when Vanya was a young child, she was sold by her mother to her godmothers who are death and fortune. And they raise Vanya to basically serve them now that she is an adult. They, however, as an adult, make her choose. Which one of us are you going to serve? She thinks of them as parents and not as fortune and death. So she doesn't want to pick. So she goes off on her own and tries to make her way in the world on her own. She becomes a basically a maid for a very rich family and they are not necessarily good to Vanya. We see Vanya kind of try to gain some autonomy in this family by basically stealing their daughter's life. Giselle has a set of pearls that makes her look a certain way and anyone wearing the pearls will have her countenance. So Vanya steals those pearls, has the countenance of Giselle and basically sends Giselle away. Giselle no longer looks like herself and sends her to basically an orphanage to live out the rest of her life. And Vanya steps into Giselle's life. But since Vanya can change what she looks like, she also starts becoming kind of a thief and stealing from rich people to get out of Giselle's engagement. Giselle is engaged to a man who is not, he's not good. We kind of find out some of his behavior is very not good towards women and that the even the maids talk amongst themselves to not go into the hallways alone because you don't want to run into him alone in the hallways. He is deplorable. So she is trying to steal money to basically get enough money to leave this situation. While stealing from a pretty rich family, Vanya steals a token of protection from a god and while leaving this heist, the god comes and places a 
curse on Vanya. And the only way for Vanya to lift this curse is to give back and kind of have retribution for the things that Vanya has taken. They don't give Vanya any ideas of how to do that. So it's really kind of up to Vanya to figure out a new path in life in order to lift this curse. The God has a shapeshifter child called Rania, and to be honest, I would give my life for this character. I love Rania so very much. I love her so, so much. I love seeing her in all her forms. And I'm just, I'm just in love with this character. Basically the God sends their child off to kind of watch Vanya and see if Vanya makes the changes and kind of be a part of this and be kind of a sidekick to Vanya during this time of being cursed. And I just, my favorite character in the book so far is definitely Vanya. So even now that I'm 50% in, I'm starting to see that this world is starting to grow and expand and the story is starting to grow and expand past what I just kind of said that is in the synopsis into an even more intricate plot line and intricate story and there's even more going on here than I originally anticipated and I cannot wait to see how that plays out throughout the book. I can't wait to see if Vanya can lift the curse, how Vanya lifts the curse. I am here for it. I don't know how many more sprints we're going to do on Aoife's channel, but I am going to log off from here and get right back into Little Thieves. Considering this is 500 pages, I may get most of this done in a day. I'm just, I am so shocked at how fast this is reading. So, so digestible. Margaret Owen's writing is very digestible, very captivating and easy to just binge through. And considering the size of this fantasy and the intricacy of the world, it just shows how well it's written that you can just roll right through the book at this pace. And I'm seeing a few other people reading this in the comments and they're flying through it too. So it's not just me. It's definitely a really digestible book. Hello friends. Very, very late last night. I finished Little Thieves. I cannot believe I read a 500 page fantasy novel in one day. How did I do that? I can only say that it was the book. It was the book itself because there's no way I have ever done that before with such a chunky fantasy novel. But I loved this book so much. Really what stood out for me, and I was even talking about this with Margaret last night on Sprints, was the characters. I fell head over heels in love with the characters, specifically um, Ragna. But I also just loved all the characters in this book. Emmerich, Vanya, Giselle. Like, I loved the characters in this book. And I was invested in the plot. I loved seeing how this band kind of came together. The relationships, the interpersonal relationships in this group. How they banded together to kind of figure out the solution to some of their problems. I'm intrigued to see kind of what their next adventure is. There is a sequel already out and I think there's going to be more. And I want to see how they tackle even more problems and adventures and things. But what really stood out for me in this book was the characters. Margaret Owen wrote characters that I fell in love with. There were so many times where a quote would happen and I would just like send the quote to Margaret with like a emoji of how I was feeling about that quote. It just got me so it got me right here in in the in all the feels. I felt all the feels for these characters. I absolutely loved them. And because of that and everything that I said to you previously, I did end up giving this book 5 stars. I can see why this is on Margaret's host favorites. And I just absolutely loved my time with these characters and can't wait to spend more time with them in the sequel, Painted Devils, and any books that Margaret Owen would like to write about these characters. That is the end of the Brazil leg of this readathon. Technically, I have made it to Brazil. And at this point in time, we've had our Brazil detour. I've completed that already as well. So now I'm just kind of like, what, what do I do? What do I do? I don't think we're going to get a city today. We got a detour today. So like, I'm not expecting a city today. Are we getting one tomorrow? 
Who knows? I literally have no idea what's coming. So I'm going to do some sightseeing and then I will come back and chat with you once I know where the next city is and what the prompt is. But for right now, I'm going to do some sightseeing. I have two books pulled out for sightseeing in Brazil. I would love to get them both done. I'm going to let you know what they are. I have plans and as you can see, I've started reading Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is a host favorite. I need some cash. So we get 50 GRC for every host favorite. So that is why I'm reading this. If you're wondering how it fills the prompt, there's two people on the cover. And then my copy has a picture of Get a Life Chloe Brown and there's two people on the back. So four people over three, we're good. I would also like to read Will They or Won't They by Ava Wilder. I pre-ordered this book and I need to read it for an upcoming video. You will have not seen this yet. You will see this video first um, because this video is not coming out until September, but I do need to read this for a video. So that's what I'm going to do. So we have officially made it to London. That is our next destination. Well, we haven't actually made it there yet. We need to get to London. That is the next destination on The Amazing Race. I just watched the video. I've been helping Team Blue pick their books because this prompt is my this is my personality. So I'm very excited about this prompt because we need to read a retelling. And if you've been around for a while, you know I am a very nostalgic reader. So I absolutely love a retelling. I love a book that takes me back to a story that I've loved before. So I'm very excited to be reading a retelling. I've decided to pick up the second in a series, the Ravenspire series. And that is The Wish Granter by C.J. Redwine. This is the second book in the series. The first book is The Shadow Queen. I read it sometime last year. And that is obviously a Snow White retelling. The Shadow Queen, it has a big like poison apple on the cover. It's quite obviously a Snow White retelling. The Wish Granter is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. Very excited about this. And I cannot wait to dive back into this writer's writing. Like I said, this is a series, but I'm pretty sure each book is like a standalone. I don't think they connect other than that it is a series of retellings. I will know for sure once I obviously read the second one and see if there's any characters from the first books in this series, but I have a suspicion that they don't connect, which would be good for everyone to know because then you could pick up any book in the series in any order. But I am going to be reading The Wish Granter book two. Other than the fact that it's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, I know no things. So I will check back in with you when I've read a little bit of this and let you know my thoughts. The first book I picked up as a Snow White retelling and then found out there were dragons in it and was very excited. So is there sneaky dragons in the second book? I don't know. I would be very excited if there were sneaky dragons in the second book, but I'm like I said, I don't know if the worlds connect in any way. So I'm going to hold out hope on the dragon situation. But the first book, if you're looking for a retelling with dragons, that that's your jam. Attention, attention. This is your blue team flight attendant coming to you with a little hint from our captain. We have been informed that Blue Team has been sabotaged the most by Team Red. Now back to our scheduled programming. So I have finished The Wish Granter by CJ Redwine, and this was such a great time. I will say you could kind of read these out of order. We do see the kind of main characters from the first book in the first chapter of this book, but just kind of at a ball in passing. So they don't make a huge indent on this book. And sadly to say there's no dragons in this book. That was a sad, that was a sad realization, but that's okay. This book was still really fun. It really leaned into Faye because Rumpelstiltskin in this book is not called Rumpelstiltskin. He's called Teague, but he is a ancient Faye sorcerer who grants wishes. And in exchange for your wish, you promise him your soul in 10 years. So basically you make a contract with Teague. So at the beginning of this book, we see that we follow Thad and Ariana. 
they are the bastard children of the current king. The king has died and his wife, who has a little tiny baby, is trying to kill Thad and Ari because she's concerned that they are going to have a claim on the throne over her son. Teague goes to her and tries to make a deal for her soul to get rid of Thad and Ari. She says no, she's not playing around with him. So he goes to Thad because the queen is trying to kill Thad and Ariana. And Thad is a great brother and he just wants to protect Ariana. So he makes a wish with Teague to protect Ariana. And the only way Teague basically can make that happen is to make Thad king. Ariana finds out that he has done this and is very upset because obviously there is fine print in this contract that is wreaking havoc on the kingdom. And obviously she also doesn't want her brother to lose his soul in 10 years. She is very upset that he's made this deal. So she decides to figure out how to end Teague. Thad is also trying to figure this out, but kind of on his own. And he's trying to do it by brute force, but obviously Teague is magical. So like that doesn't really work. And Ari is trying to look into the history of the Fae to find out how to end Teague the Wish Granter. She is helped by her friend Cleo, who is one of the kitchen maids, as well as the new master of arms, Sebastian. We also see a little bit of a romance between Ari and Sebastian in this book, and I love them both, and I love this coupling. I loved Ari. Ari is such a strong female character. She doesn't care what princesses are supposed to do and what princesses are supposed to be like. She is going to be how she is. She is also a plus size main character. And that was kind of a surprise because I didn't know going into this book that it had plus size reps. So that was exciting to see in this fairy tale. She gets actually a lot of backlash from like the royals that she doesn't look how a princess should look. And she is very strong of being against that and showing that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. And there's body positivity in this book. And I loved that part of this book as well. And seeing that in kind of a fairy tale way, because that's not what you see in fairy tales a lot of times. So I was really glad to see that in this retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. I really enjoyed my time with this book and I'm going to give it four stars. I really love this retelling series and I am definitely going to be continuing on with the next one. I have no idea what the next retelling is, but I'm excited to pick it up when the time is right. So I have made it to London and I will not be sightseeing in London because Face Off starts in a matter of hours and I have some editing to do for this video and some other things. So I am just not going to sightsee in London unless we have time after Face Off weekend because I have no idea when the next city drops. But as of right now, I'm going to end this vlog and start my Face Off vlog. So you have now seen me travel to four cities in The Amazing Race and read four amazing books. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye.